Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Bentway's information session for Transform the Trail. My name is Anna Gallagher Ross, and I am the Senior Manager of Programming here at the Bentway. I use she, her pronouns. Thank you so much for joining us here tonight. Um, I just want to let everyone who is attending here know that the session will be recorded. Uh, so for you to be aware of that fact. Um, and of course, if you have any questions to please uh, send them through to the chat, we do have a colleague of mine who is monitoring. I first wanted to begin our session with a land acknowledgement. We here at the Bentway acknowledge that the land that we are on are the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and that Toronto is now home to many diverse First Nations, including Inuit and Métis people. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. So thank you, everyone. I apologize that there's a bit of a delay in starting this evening. Um, it has been a bit of technical difficulties on our side, but we're just so happy to have you all here. Um, so I'm going to launch right in and then in the hopes that we could save time for questions. Um, so welcome to the Transform the Trail information session, as I mentioned. I wanted to begin by introducing you to the Bentway and our work. Uh, so the Bentway is located for those um, who are learning and meeting us for the first time today. Uh, we're located in the downtown of the city of Toronto, and uh, we uh, are located underneath the Gardner Expressway, um, which is a highway that traces the former shoreline of Lake Ontario. The Bentway opened in 2018 and has since then uh, really uh, grown as a beloved public space. Uh, in the surrounding neighborhoods that adjoin it. Um, today, more than 200,000 people reside along the entire stretch of the Gardener. And so you can imagine that public spaces like the Bentway in many of the vertical communities that surround really serve as vital places and vital backyards for Torontonians. And so the Gardener, I think it's fair to say, has always been a controversial piece of infrastructure from, uh, from the perspective of Torontonians. Uh, it's not necessarily a beloved piece, um, but the Betway was really founded by a group of urbanists to try and address the problem of connectivity, because really the Gardener acts as a barrier to our waterfront. And so the Betway really stands for a lot of things, but among them is really finding ways to newly connect Torontonians to each other, but also to, to connect them from the downtown core to the waterfront. So as I mentioned before, the Bentway in its small five-year history has really um, emerged as a vital public space, not only for the folks that live in the surrounding neighborhoods, but also for folks coming in from across the GTA. Um, we are also emerging as a leader, really, in the public art conversation in Toronto and internationally. Uh, we commission um, over 20 projects each year. Uh, we operate on a three-season basis, so with a fall season, um, a winter season, uh, which we're talking about today, and a spring-summer season. And really, we're interested in uh, bringing artists into our public space advocacy work, really seeing artists as urbanists, artists who can help us spark conversations about the vitality and the need for public space, and really to introduce unique commissions for our site that can spark a conversation not only about the unique architecture of the Bentway, but also of the city that we all live in. Another key aspect of our work is that the Bentway was founded on radical accessibility. And so we understand that that's a practice and not necessarily um, something that you can achieve all in one go. We do strive for all of our programming to be free to attend, which is very important to our work. Um, and of course, we do not have walls uh, at the Bentway, but really are always trying to seek out ways of removing barriers, whether they are physical um, or otherwise. The Bentway really, um, I think to sum up our mission, is to provoke and spark the urban imagination. Every season that I mentioned uh, before is always dedicated to a different theme that addresses um, an issue in our city or a current conversation. We have curated seasons where we look at the street in new ways. We've looked at the role that play can have in urban recovery. Um, and so every season really is a way to bring together creative partners to collaborate not only with our space, collaborate with the theme, but also um, to collaborate with the weather. Because of course, being an outdoor public space, it is always a collaboration with the weather. But I'm proud to sort of say that since our opening, 
you know, we've commissioned over 200 artists. We've worked with over 600 creatives, both locally and internationally. And I will say, I think what we're especially proud of is having supported over 300 creatives since the start of the pandemic at a time, I think, when the industry, of course, as we all know, has suffered the most. So these are some examples of past Bantway projects that we're very proud of. You'll see one transform the trail commission, um, which I'll say a bit more about. At the Bentway, our programming approach um, is multi-pronged. So I think that, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we really see our programs as inviting in active participation. And that's not only our artists being active participants in the work, but really we see uh, our visitors as active participants. Every project that we curate at the Bentway is really about uh, sparking a new conversation, but also an invitation to uh, come and uh, be a part of the work in a new way. We also look to artists and creatives, as I said before, to help us map out the future of public space. We don't see art as just animating public space. We actually see it as catalyst, as something that can have a legacy about teaching us uh, about that public space and about the ways we inhabit it, about the ways it could be designed better in the future. Um, and so we really see artists as urbanists and as urban planners. Co-creation is also a really key part of our work. We really seek to uh, co-create with community. And so I think that in every, um, in every project that we embark upon, partnership is really at the core and really the foundation of our work, um, whether that be with partners locally in Toronto uh, or internationally. And finally, as a catalyst, as I mentioned, we really look to see a larger life for the works um, that we're creating with artists and how they can inform our work uh, for the future. So transform the trail. Uh, what is transform the trail? Um, I think that we all know if we live in Canada that winter is a challenging time. Uh, it's a season that can lack inspiration and transform the trail really came about in order to infuse uh, inspiration into a season which is typically quite cold and quite dark. Uh, for those who know the Bentway, you know that a very important feature of our site in winter is the figure eight skate trail. Uh, where people come to skate each year. We welcome over 30,000 people to our site during the winter months uh, who are really seeking the recreation of skating. It's a great way of, you know, um, lightening the winter months. And Transform the Trail was really a chance to convert those skaters to uh, art lovers as well. And so what we've done since our um, founding is to always uh, include a um, unique commission on our skate trail that accompanies um, that accompanies a skating experience. And so we formally launched this program in 2021. Transform the Trail is now in its second year. And of course, the uh, opportunity that we're discussing today is for the third iteration. And what the program seeks to do is to form unique um, opportunities for artists to take on winter in Toronto. Um, for them to build new and positive relationships with our site, with our audiences and with the winter season. And we're really asking artists and designers to embrace and collaborate with the winter climate, um, you know, to educate, to innovate, of course, um, and to really inspire us uh, to enjoy these months and to see them anew. As with every uh, commission on our site, it is a deeply site-specific process, citing a work at the Bentway. Uh, many people talk about how we have a unique microclimate as an organization and as a site. Uh, you know, the winds are stronger under the gardener. Uh, the temperatures can be colder. Uh, so it really is a unique site, um, not only the landscape and its uh, topography and material, like the concrete and the salt, but also um, the wind that passes through it and the elements. Pictured here, um, was our inaugural commission for Transform the Trail by Maureen Grubin, which is um, from 2021, 2022. And uh, for her project, Maureen really took on the gardener and its role as a transportation artery and juxtaposing it to her relationship to transportation um, in her hometown in the Northwest Territories. And so what you see here is a beautiful set of sleds that Maureen fashioned for the skate trail that sparked a sort of conversation about what it means to move and be mobile. The current commission that is on our site as of now, so anyone in Toronto, I hope that you will come down and take a look, uh, is Beacons by Shelley Zhang. Beacons is uh, a unique artwork um, that is tied to a theme for our 
uh, winter season called First Winter, which uh, for which we were really excited to explore what it means to experience winter for the first time as a newcomer in our city. Of course, the Canadian winter and especially the Toronto urban winter is a very particular experience. And Shelley, as a newcomer herself, really answered the call by wanting to lean into and honor the communal solidarity that one finds as a newcomer to Canada and the kinds of warmth and beacons of hope that she found herself during those cold winter months. And so this was translated into a beautiful set of flame-like sculptures that adorn the vents around the skate trail and project lights uh, that are reminiscent of the dawn in wintertime. So the primary objectives of Transport on the Trail uh, so first and foremost, art and recreation. I think, as I said before, we're excited about, you know, welcoming folks to our skating rink and converting those skaters to art lovers and to really um, complement and augment uh, this recreational activity. We're interested in how artists can take on day to night. Of course, there's very different conditions with the winter light during the day. And then, of course, the darkness that we seem to find so early at about 5 p.m. And so we're really looking for works that can exist day to night and to embrace color and light um, and draw sort of attention to the gloomier uh, concrete of the Bentway during the winter. We're also looking for work that is uniquely urban, um, artists who are developing strategies that celebrate our architecture and what it means to be in an urban landscape uh, during winter time. As you can see for those living in Toronto outside the door, <laughs> Um, right now, it is not a typical winter. There is no snow on the ground. It is actually quite wet. <laughs> um, and there's been hail all day. So as you know, um, it's not typically a bucolic sort of uh, winter scene always. Uh, and finally, uh, we're looking, of course, for artists who are interested in collaborating with climate. Um, so addressing the weather conditions in winter and also the materials of the landscape um, and finding new ways to apply and engage with them. So who can apply? We're very excited to be extending this open call, which is new for the program, and also it being a national call. So we are opening this opportunity across Canada to Canadian artists, designers, creative collectives, who really have an interest in the opportunity to engage in this public artwork with us. Uh, applicants must demonstrate an ongoing creative practice and have a history of public presentation. Um, and we really do encourage applications from folks at all stages of their career. Um, I also want to highlight, um, and this will come up a few times in this deck, um, if you have any questions or require any accommodations in the application process, um, please contact Jamie Meyer, who is our fantastic wizard of HR at the Bentway. She is here to support you in the application process and to answer any questions that you have. And I will also leave my email in the chat by, at the end of this, just so folks can reach out with any directed questions to me as well. Budget. So the available artwork budget is 140,000 Canadian. This is inclusive of all costs, including artist fees, uh, travel and accommodations if you're coming from out of town, uh, you know, materials, uh, supplemental insurance, engineering expenses, et cetera, um, but really is the sort of entire pro project budget. Uh, we also do of course provide supplemental funding for marketing and promotions. And I think most important, um, I really want to underscore that our programming and production teams are really the resource to see you through this work and the development process. Um, you will uh, receive immense support from our production team uh, in the realization of this project. So the selection process, uh, this commission will be awarded uh, during and following a two-stage uh, competitive process. So stage one um, is the expressions of interest, which of course we are in now, uh, that are due um, at the end of this month. Uh, so the initial round of applications will be reviewed by an internal uh, team here at the Bentway and evaluated in accordance with the criteria that um, I will discuss below. Um, and then a maximum of four creatives will be shortlisted for the stage two process. And in the stage two process, those four creatives will be invited to prepare design proposals for consideration. So in stage two, shortlisted artists will meet with us. Um, there will be an onboarding uh, where they will be able to consult with us. This will be either virtual or in person, depending on where you are located. And you will be given a much more fulsome brief. So a brief for designing, um, an artwork that could appear at the Bentway, uh, a design proposal, um, as well as a high level budget uh, in accordance with the budget, of course, that I mentioned previously, the 140,000. 
as well as a work back schedule. Um, we will, of course, schedule a midterm session where we can provide feedback and discuss the technical and uh, logistics of the work. Um, and in that process, those selected for that sort of second stage would, of course, be compensated for their labor and for their time with an honorarium of $3,000. And then following uh, the submission deadline, those completed proposals uh, would be then sent to the Bentway Arts Advisory, which is made up of local curators, artists, thinkers um, in the city of Toronto, a core committee um, who really will review those final uh, four shortlisted and make a selection. So just to do a quick review of the program timeline, the application deadline is January 31st at 11.59 p.m. Shortlisted artists uh, will be notified um, February 4th. Deadline for design proposals will be March 9th. The evaluation of those design proposals by our arts advisory would be in mid-March. And then the finalist would be notified by end of March. This would, be, of course, be followed by the project development period, which would span from April 1st through to November 23. And then the public presentation, the best part. Uh, so that would fall in mid-December 2023. And typically our winter season runs through late February uh, 2024. So evaluation criteria. Uh, important in this criteria is demonstrated experience and ability uh, executing temporary and or site responsive works in public space. Ability to respond to the Bentway's stated project objectives and programming principles, as I've outlined earlier. And ability to engage with the unique conditions of winter and also, um, I think, fundamentally to reach broad audiences. How to apply. So a complete stage one application includes the following components. A CV in PDF format, no more than three pages maximum, please. Uh, two, the expression of interest, which we ask uh, not to exceed uh, two pages. That uh, should include answers to the following questions. You know, what is your interest in the commission and stated objectives for the project? What is your interest in creating public artwork for the winter season? How might the winter climate inform your approach? Such a fundamental question. And then also, we would really love to learn more about you and get a bit of perspective on your artistic practice and really how this opportunity will fall and what it sort of means at this stage in your career. Finally, number three, work samples. So we ask for detailed information on three relevant projects to this opportunity. In development or completed is fine. Um, please include, you know, the following information. We ask for project title, location, project overview, just a brief description. Um, your role, of course, uh, in the realization of that project, team members, if applicable, um, as well as just a high level budget and duration. Um, and uh, we will circulate um, the link once again, but as I said before, Jamie Meyer, if you have any questions about attaching your work samples, about filling out the application, Jamie is here for you and uh, her email is here below. So things to note and of import. Of course, all submissions are considered confidential. Uh, the submission of this application does not guarantee selection, of course. Uh, the deadline for submissions is fast approaching. It is January 31st. And the successful shortlisted applicants will be notified by early February. And um, just to say that uh, incomplete applications will unfortunately not be considered. Thank you so much for your interest and for listening. Um, I think I've probably talked enough at this point um, and really would welcome uh, questions of any kind at this point. Um, I'm gonna take a look in the chat and answer accordingly. I see Lawrence Bird has a question. Are the projects and work samples to be included all on one page or is it one page per work sample? Uh, one page per work sample, um, definitely. Um, and then an anonymous attendee asked, can you please speak to the level of art experience, professional experience as artists, the preferred candidate should have. Our two person team is composed of landscape architects who have worked on construction and installation projects with similar budgets. This would however be the largest art specific project we have bid on. The last two winter winners have been professional artists. So we wanna understand if this is a requirement of the preferred candidate. 
Um, I think that you should definitely still apply. And I think that we would want to hear from you um, about the argument of why you are transitioning from your landscape architecture practice to artistic work. Um, I don't think that a landscape architect is any less an artist than an artist themselves. So we do welcome those who um, identify as such. I think the committee would just be interested once again in why at this juncture in your career, this um, opportunity is meaningful. I am a resident in Toronto with a work permit. Am I eligible to apply? Yes, you are. How many uh, applications did we receive? So actually, this is the first time that we are opening this up as a call for submissions. Um, I will say though, that with every call for submissions at the Bentley, we often um, receive you know, between 50 and 60 um, at, at a regular, um, but for Transform the Trail in particular, this has been a curated opportunity up until now that we worked on with a diversity of partners, but this is the first time we have, of course, opened it up into a call for submissions. Um, if you are submitting as a team, do you submit one CV per person or are we supposed to combine into one? Um, I think for clarity, you can definitely each submit one CV. Um, I don't think you need to combine into one. You mentioned experience, oh, but what would it, but it wouldn't matter in what level. What does that entail? I might need um, a bit of clarification from you, Vanessa, if you don't mind. I would love to answer your question though. I think I'm maybe reading it incorrectly. Uh, will we have access to this deck or the recording? Absolutely, we can circulate um, the deck to anyone who wants to pull up. We will also be posting the recording on YouTube. So it will be available for sure. Can you speak to how the previous artists were selected as it was curated previously? Absolutely. So typically uh, we have a curatorial team here at the Bentway um, made up of four individuals, um, but we really work with our arts advisory very closely for these um, high level um, opportunities. So what we typically do is create a shortlist based on a, a large degree of outreach. Um, and then we would typically reach out to those artists. What we did with Last Transform the Trail was reach out to those artists and ask if they had an interest in developing a design brief. Similarly, like this opportunity, we asked them and then compensated them for their time in coming up with the design brief. And then we did bring that to our arts advisory. So it was a more directed outreach by our team um, and definitely is always based on us trying to expand who we are working with, uh, looking to reflect the diversity of our city, but also the country at, as a whole. Um, and yeah. Can we offer photos in our work samples? Absolutely. How many proposals are selected to create a final project? So only one uh, proposal will be selected as the final, as the finalist. We will only be realizing one public art commission for Transform the Trail. As you mentioned before, there is a production team from the Bentway. I would like to ask the extent of your aid in the production of my artwork so I can better estimate the budgeting, of course. So really you should see um, our programming and production teams as your sort of collaborator and co-conspirator and project manager. You know, some artists like to project manage their own work, but the Bentway really steps up to do that project management for you. We will also be, you know, troubleshooting with you all the technical requirements of the work. We would be liaising with engineers, with vendors such as fabricators. We would be ensuring that that was all set up for you we would typically hold the production budget and expend it on your behalf to all of those vendors so that artists aren't taking on the labor of doing that. Um, so really, I think you can um, expect a lot of care and a lot of close collaboration in bringing your project to realization. How many artists are shortlisted? Do you offer accessibility accommodations? So I'll answer the second question first. We absolutely do offer accessibility accommodations. And if you have any specific questions about the accommodation that you require, you can definitely reach out to Jamie um, and articulate that. And we will be choosing four shortlisted candidates. Uh, sorry, I'm just reading these. Uh, if we are an artist working with a team to execute the project, do we need to include all the names and credentials of each team member 
or will a bio be necessary as well? You mentioned adding a CV. If there are several contributors, it may be difficult to combine everyone into one document. If you are working with an extensive team, I would recommend combining the information and providing a bio for everyone involved. I think it's important for the evaluation committee to understand um, all of the expertise involved, and um, it just gives dimensionality and a sense of understanding of your intent. So I, I do recommend doing that. What happens to the installation once its term is done? Excellent question, Susan. Thank you. Um, I think at the Bentway, it's very important for us from a sustainability perspective to be mindful in the creation of public artworks. And so we're always trying to strategize with the artists that we collaborate with to think of the afterlife of the project. It can work in a number of ways. Sometimes artists actually reclaim the piece or aspects of it in negotiation with the Bentway, and we will actually re-situate um, them in gallery contexts. Um, so there have been artworks that have actually had a life beyond in the galleries. Um, we also look to recycle material and to work with local partners, um, but it's really on a tailored case by case basis. We always make sure that there is um, as little waste, however, as possible. Um, someone asked, do you have fabricators that would execute the build or do we source our own? The Bentway does have a roster of fabricators who are not only top notch, but also know our site very well. And so um, we're very open to fabricators that artists may bring to the table, um, but definitely we would work with the artist to manage that relationship with that fabricator. And of course, it's always about matchmaking and finding the right fabricator for the project. So we're very open to new to new people, as long as it's, of course, within budget. If I'm an artist applying in collaboration with a project manager with whom I collaborate often in public art bids, where I would take on the creative process and they oversee logistics and contractual details, would this be okay? Should they also have a CV in the application? Um, I think it's worth including the CV and also understanding that um, that person is integral to how that artist works. So I think that the more information that you can give, the better, always. How is the artist fees calculated? That's a very good question. Thank you. Is there a maximum portion of the budget allotted for each cost? Um, so uh, typically at the Bentway, we would calculate the artist fee based on 15% of the total budget. So that is how we would be approaching the artist fee for the uh, Transform the Trail Commission. Um, and then in terms of the remaining production fee, uh, we of course would have to tailor that to the design brief. And so no, there is no specific allocation. Um, but of course, we and our production team would work with you to cost out that budget and to um, make sure that it's relevant to your work. Um, someone asks, can the project include sound? Can it be interactive? Can people touch or play with it? Is more weight given to projects that are interactive? Um, I think it's always a balance. You know, I think in public space, we really um, advocate for interactivity, but there's always health and safety to be mindful of. Um, you did ask whether sound is possible, and absolutely. We do typically, however, have skating. Um, we, we do typically have music that accompanies our skating trail. So artists are always sort of negotiating with that, which is like a big staple of the Bentway. We're not opposed to sound and are very open to talking about it. I would flag, however, that we are situated in a residential area. So we have to be mindful about sound being turned off by a certain time of night and also moderating the level of sound. So I think there would be a few things to negotiate. I think a sound project, we're always welcoming that as an aspect of your work. Um, but of course, there are other uh, pieces that you'd have to negotiate along with that. Um, someone asked, are there resources and equipment available for digital projections? Um, so the Bentway uh, tries to rent out as much as possible. So that would be coming out of your project budget. Uh, we don't, as an outdoor space, have a lot of storage, although that's something that we're working on. Um, and so we would, um, of course, uh, look at the technical requirements of your project and uh, cost that out and uh, secure vendors and rentals for that. Just to clarify, someone said, Bentway requires that applicants have prior personal experience in such public art installations. Yes, we are looking for applicants who can demonstrate that they have had experience um, creating public artworks. And those can be temporary or um, permanent. Are there any restrictions in terms of content of the artwork? 
Um, no, I don't think that there are any restrictions. I think we're quite game for any argument to be made. Um, of course, we would want it to be mindful of the intergenerational populations that um, exist on the Bentway site during winter and throughout the year, and also would want it to be thoughtfully engaging with the theme of Transform the Trail and really the winter um, as its subject. Is there a limit to light integration into the project, taking into consideration the residential aspect of location? Um, I think that there's a few factors. We do have safety lights that are always on at nighttime at the Bentway. There are overhead floodlights that are sort of a health and safety requirement. Um, however, as you saw in the photos, Shelley, Be Shelley Zhang's beacons actually does feature a series of lights and they aren't actually in too much competition with the floodlights. It's just that you aren't able to get that dramatic contrast in the darkness. So that's just something to be mindful of, but we definitely welcome light uh, works and um, are always here to negotiate that um, with you and the team. So who is it that typically manages the day-to-day runtime? So turning on and off lights or even turning on and off projectors. So at the Bentway we have a facilities team who takes care of our site and is there um, really um, during most of the hours of our skate trail operation and so they would be in charge um, in negotiation with our production team of course of laying out whatever needs were uh, if something needed to be turned on turned off etc is the curation team transform the trail pro program interested in or open to sound installations or projects or is the call for visual public art installation specifically? I think that it's important for us um, with the grayness of winter and with the concrete to really bring a vibrancy of color and of light to the site. So I would say that we're open to a sound component, but would also want there to be a visual component as well. If we don't have any scale of experience and are new to commission working, would we be able to apply for something like this, even though we don't, even though we might not, even though we might be doing something we have not done before? So I think, Dominic, um, it's important for us that the applicants have a demonstrated experience working in public art. Um, we leave that to you to do define and to determine, but I think it is important that applicants are set up for success and they will be entering into, you know, a process of working um, on, you know, a pretty set timeline. And we just want to make sure that folks have experience to bring to bear on that and will be ready, um, ready for that opportunity. Thank you so much. Also wondering if for the relevant projects, we can submit landscape architecture, for example, a public seating installation with artistic elements, or it has to be art project by definition. Once again, I think that as long as there is an argument made as to why it is an artwork, um, we are happy and uh, look forward to considering it. Can relevant projects be landscape architecture projects we did at our jobs? Oh, I think I've already answered that. Beyond sound as an aspect of the work, is the Bentway interested in receiving applications for sound art installations with visual elements rather than visual art installations with sound components, perhaps as they engage with the loudspeaker you mentioned? Absolutely. Yes, I think if you are interested as a sound practitioner in it being a sound project with visual elements, we are open to um, exploring that for sure. I think just as I said before, we would want it to have that visual component. Yeah. My experience with public artwork is with murals, but I'd like to create an interactive piece for this project. Would I be considered if my portfolio is only murals? I think um, definitely if you have an experience executing murals in the public setting, that is definitely an example of working in public art. And I think that we would absolutely consider your application. Yeah, we're here to help with that transition. I think we're just looking for folks who have brought projects from conception to fruition and who have done that in the public context. Oh, really good question here. Are there restrictions on how we might integrate the actual gardener? Hanging things from underneath the highway, for example, or installing things onto pillars? So yes, any successful candidate uh, will know and learn from us that there are some restrictions. Um, we actually, due to our understanding with transportation, cannot hang directly from the deck of the gardener, which is the roof. Um, we also do have existing infrastructure on the columns themselves uh, that we can utilize for various um, aspects. 
such as hanging, we have become very uh, innovative in finding ways of addressing things of this kind. So our team is ready with ratchet strap solutions, um, with uh, tension cuff solutions. We can't drill into the columns though. So that's an important piece. But anyway, you will learn much more about this um, if you advance to the next stage. And also happy to answer any further questions over email. Must all traces of the project disappear at the end of the project? For example, markings on the concrete columns would have to be removed. Yes, absolutely. So we don't actually um, paint the columns ever. Um, it's really important for us to use vinyl or other methods that uh, of course can be removed without a trace. Uh, do you have a sense of the, the time commitment other artists have put into this in the past? I'm part of a team, but we all have full-time jobs, so I'm curious about the feasibility of doing this outside of work. This is a great question. Also, of course, relates to the scope of what you end up proposing, and of course, relates to the artists themselves. But just to say that, you know, on a typical cadence, we begin the process, you know, in the spring. Uh, typically, we'd be meeting with that artist on a bi-weekly basis, uh, uh, once uh, on a bi-weekly basis. And then, of course, as we kick into gear over the summer and things get closer, we would want to move to a weekly cadence of meeting. Um, of course, within and between those meetings, we would be expecting, you know, design proposal revisions. We would ha be having meetings with engineers. Um, so I definitely think with a full-time job, it's possible. Um, but of course, you know, we would hope that that candidate would be able to meet during the week times, during working hours for engineers and other vendors, um, so that they would be able to uh, be part of that process. So I think flexibility with a full-time job is important. Um, are we able to have work for sale that is installed? What sort of promotion? Of an av as an advertiser does the artist get for their individual practice um so the bentway um so we're a nonprofit. um we as i said earlier uh only offer cultural events that are free to attend and so uh we would not be uh, pitching this work as something that is for sale but we of course um feel very strongly about forging a really strong network for that artist, introducing their work to our curatorial network and to the arts organizations that we work with. And of course, if that artist were looking to reclaim that piece after the fact, that's always a negotiation and definitely something we would consider. Ah, great question. Can we put things into the soil in the garden bed surrounding the trail? What surfaces are we allowed to use in the area? Um, so absolutely, uh, the bioswales, as we call them, are the uh, sort of green areas that um, adorn the sh or are adjacent to the skate trail. And we have sited works in the bioswales. They do have existing infrastructure under them. So there's actually a bit of a plumbing system because essentially what their function is, is to take the water from the deck of the gardener and to remediate it uh, through the types of plantings that are there. Of course, in winter time, those plantings have scaled back because they have died. Um, but it is really important um, definitely to be respectful of that infrastructure and that plumbing um, and to also mark, of course, that the ground is often frozen, which makes it difficult to work with. Can someone be one of the can one of the team members be someone who worked for the city of Toronto but is now retired? Absolutely. So the Bentway um, is an independent organization of the city of Toronto. So there is no conflict of interest there. If someone is retired, that's great. Yeah. Would these meetings initially at least be able to be held remotely or does the artist have to arrive in Toronto for the spring? Oh, absolutely remotely. So we've worked with artists um, from all over. Um, you know, we've even installed works actually without the artist present, um, although that is, of course, always an option. I think what's very crucial is that the artist is available for a site visit um, early on in the process, because it really is, you know, if you're coming from out of town, the best and most essential way to formulate, um, you know, a more in-depth proposal once you've been selected. And then, of course, uh, if that artist uh, needed to, uh, they would, of course, be there for the installation process. Are there any materials that aren't allowed? I work with glass. Um, gosh, I wish my production team was here. I can say pretty um, confidently that glass is difficult in public space to work with. That said, we would always work with artists to translate their ambition or their intention into a material that would be durable and would last in not only the elements, but also in public space over the course of the run. 
So no, there are not um, materials necessarily that are ruled out, but you do need to be mindful of the need for durability and the need for them to last in the cold and in a public space that in as it is at times unsupervised. Are the vertical supports the only site available for installation? Um, no, as I said before, we've cited works in the bioswales themselves. We've utilized, um, of course, the columns for different works, um, but we really welcome, um, you know, all ideas from artists as to how the skate trail can transform. I think as long as it's preserving the ability to skate and for it to remain accessible. Is there an armature to hang sculptural pieces or do they have to be mounted to walls the ground? Um, so there are, as I mentioned before, some existing pieces um, or hanging points on the columns far up them uh, that can actually take quite a load and are definitely available. Um, and of course, we would troubleshoot with that person if there was some type of hanging system needed. However, I would also give the caveat that due to high winds in winter, um, we are cautious about hanging um, from the columns. Doesn't rule it out, but we would need a persuasive argument as to why. Uh, question here says, can you further clarify the community involvement component or the co-creation element of the programming approach? Yes, I'm happy to do that. So I think that um, it's really important for us always to create meaningful invitations into the work that our artists are creating. And so I think that we sort of think of a project as the spoke in a wheel. Um, once that project was you know, developed and uh, is getting close to being realized, we would of course want to reach out to um, any relevant committee communities that um, you know, might have an interest in the work. We really wanna build up a community conversation around the piece. So it's not only outreaching to the uh, people who live in the Fort York neighborhood and city place surrounding the Bentway, but really thinking about how to create meaningful uh, invitations that extend across the GTA uh, into artist work. So I think that we see the community as always front and center in the realization of a work for public space. You know, the community is um, who makes their uh, home in the Bentway and who uh, are there on a regular basis. So I think that we, um, Think of everything we do as having a community-centered approach and are really welcoming of artists who have that in mind as well. Uh, would you consider a student project with oversight and support from knowledgeable teaching staff who have installed public art projects? I think that we are looking for artists um, themselves who will be creating the work uh, and we do ask that they have their own experience uh, working in this way, working in public space and having realized uh, works. Uh, and someone is asking if I have experience and my team having have experience curating large scale events to fruition. Does this count as project experience? Well, I think curating like art, like artists is a definition that's quite expansive. So I think that if you're able to make an argument that you have, you know, curated, but also been a part of designing and implementing large scale public artworks in public space, we'd be willing to entertain that. But of course, we are looking for people who have vision and want to translate that um, into a public art commission. So. I would once again defer to you on how you identify and how that curatorial practice manifests. I think it can be very artistic, it can be very creative, but would lead you leave you to make that determination. Um, is the Bentway receptive to installations using digital media such as outdoor LED screens or commercial displays? So we are open to using LED screens, but once again, with public space, you need to be cautious around the care for those items. And um, frankly, you know, those are things that can be easily damaged, can easily be stolen. And so you would need to make a good argument about like an armature or a way of situating that work so that it can be um, either locked up at night or it can be situated in a way that is out of reach um, of uh, skaters. We did have a large scale LED screen as part of Maureen Grubin's uh, sculptural work that um, was uh, situated in the bioswale. So it was very difficult to reach and surrounded by a wall. So it is possible, definitely. And we would welcome that idea. I think just uh, with the caveat that it needs to be cared for. Are projects that submit things that hang directly over people's heads not as well considered given there are some safety concerns with falling? So this past summer, the Bentway did suspend a 650 foot conveyor belt over the skate trail and it did convey different hanging objects. Um, and you know, 
none of them fell and none of no one was hurt. However, I would say that I think um, in wintertime, as I've said, the winds can be brutal and they can be, you know, up to 40 kilometers an hour. Like it is not a joke. So I think that we would caution against something hanging overhead unless uh, the artist had a very strong um, argument for uh, how it would be installed and to the safety of uh, visitors for sure. Um, so someone is asking, how are you weighting each section in terms of points? So these are all of equal weight, all of the criteria that I mentioned. Does anyone have any other questions? Uh, yes, so we do ask that artists hold their own insurance. Um, and the Bentway, of course, does have supplemental general liability insurance. Of course, if artists do not currently hold their insurance, that's something that can be covered by the budget. But yeah, it is important to have um, the Bentway list as an additional uh, insured. It is possible to integrate digital components um, such as AR. Um, I think this is sort of similar to what I said to the uh, person who asked about the sound work, I think it is important to have a visual element um, in the work, but definitely if that is something that you'd like to augment with AR, um, to supplement with AR, I think we're very open to that, um, definitely as a tool. What production support is provided by the Bentway? So I did sort of answer this question earlier on, but happy to sort of um, touch on the most important bits. So we really are project managers of the work. Um, we are working side by side with the artist from beginning uh, to end. And we would work really closely to project manage. So to create a work back schedule, to work with the artist to create a budget. Uh, we would be liaising with all of the relevant vendors, unless of course the artist prefers to do that. Uh, so we would really be coordinating install, coordinating deinstall. We would be hiring any of the labor required to execute that. Uh, really, we are there every step of the way. I would say it's a very close working relationship. Are there height limitations to the artwork if it is situated on the ground? Are there size limitations at all? Consideration still given to the scale of the space, it is very, very tall. That is absolutely right and a very good observation about the Bentway. So this area of the skate trail, I wanna say is about 50 feet tall to the deck, um, maybe 60 even. So you're working with immense scale. Um, there are no height restrictions, but of course, you know, it is always on a tailored project by project basis. We would have to consult with an engineer to ensure if something was freestanding at a certain height that it was, you know, um, effectively uh, secured at the bottom. I mean, these are always just all of the questions that we will go through in securing a public artwork. That said, there is no height restriction. No, we're always game to explore everything. Are there preferred materials that are used for this project? Absolutely not. Um, I think that we, uh, as I said before, are looking for materials that are durable, that can uh, you know, last the duration of a run in winter, um, and that are of course meeting our health, safety, and accessibility requirements. Um, but no, uh, there's no preferred. Um, Joanna, I might need you to clarify um, your question, if you don't mind. Chris, if an artist has experience working on public art projects, but the budgets are a fraction of this budget, is that a deterrent? No, I don't think so. I think you should definitely apply. And I think we're always looking for folks who have that public art background and have brought projects to fruition in public space, but are looking to scale up. I think absolutely. Um, we would just want to see, you know, evidence of the projects you've worked on in the past. Uh, how does the Bentway feel about projecting directly onto the ice? I feel pretty good about it. I think that could be really interesting. I think as you know, as ever, it's always a consultation, thinking about where you situate projectors, what types of projectors you can procure, what, what falls within budget, but definitely love the way you're thinking. I think thinking of the ice as a canvas is really interesting. I 
I think that if an artist, uh, just to answer Chris's question, which is should artists name the community they plan to engage with in their work or is that an aspect of the project developed after the project initiates? I think that a strength of, of an application is to think about actually community from the outset and to think about who you might want to reach through this project. Um, so definitely recommend doing that for sure. I'm just gonna have a sip of water while anyone submits any other questions. Ah. Thank you, Joanna. Thank you. I appreciate you uh, clarifying that. So if the, um, God forbid, uh, yes, as you said, if there was an accident that occurred um, during installation, uh, definitely, um, you know, we ask that the artists, should they be involved in that accident, have the first um, insurance to bring. And then, of course, we would supplement that. But yeah, absolutely. Any other kind of person that is contracted by the Bentway directly, uh, we would be covering them, of course, for the installation. Yeah. Can you speak, this is a great question, can you further speak to some of the most well-received elements by the public and by the Bentway um, of previous installations? Um, so definitely, I think some of the strengths um, of both Maureen and Shelley's pieces, but of all the pieces that we've hosted on the skate trail are the use of color. I think it can't be underestimated. Um, I think that light similarly has a really important um, aspect to it. I think also um, artists who have a really sort of unique and new take you know, on winter that helps us see it in a new way is really beneficial. I think the, you know, um, act of experiencing um, first winter at the Bentway, which is our program running right now, you know, um, it really provides a unique and vital way of thinking about what the cold winter month, mar months are for so many people that are arriving in the country. And so I would say that a unique take on winter that helps us see it in the new way is really sort of um, at the core of the mission of this project. But yeah, beyond that, I think that uh, it's really been color. It's really been thinking about the choreography of the space. So it's a figure eight skate trail. So thinking about, you know, what it means to skate around and what you might encounter on that experience. So thinking about bodies and how they move through the space. Um, thinking about the skaters themselves, you know, of course, as visitors and of course, as um, some, some of the core uh, visitors. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you know if I think of anything else, but those are some ideas. follow up on the community question, if an artist hasn't worked with a particular community in the past, but would like to with him through the site, how this would this be received? I think that would be received very well, Chris. Um, absolutely. I think that we're always looking for art to start new conversations with new folks. So please, absolutely. Are projects that inadvertently create moments of shelter or safety for unhoused people not considered? We are thinking about whether these projects will require elements of hostile architecture to be considered. So um, first and foremost, it's really important. Um, I think, you know, the Bentway has very um, uh, vital relationships with the unhoused community that of course has a long held relationship with the Gardner Expressway. Um, I think that uh, there is a problem of having sheltered spaces on site um, because they're not adequate ho housing. And I think that we do shy away from creating those on site um, because they are not safe dwellings. Um, uh, so no, I, I think we would probably shy away from having anything resembling a shelter. What happens if the winter is very warm next year and the ice doesn't freeze? It's not an unreasonable question. Um, so, uh, we are privileged to have a refrigeration system underneath the skate trail. Uh, however, the laying of the ice does mean that it has to be at a certain temperature. So the hope would be um, that uh, it is cold enough next year to at least lay the ice, because once that is in place, the refrigeration, the fr refri I can't say the word refrigeration, it's too late in the day. The refrigeration system would really prevent it from melting. Um, but yeah, I mean, if there's no skate trail, We'll still do a transform the trail commission, but we might have to roller skate. I don't know. The skate trail is um, natural ice, so it is 
sort of a white translucent color. Okay, just reading Joanna's question. Sorry. Well, Oh, I think Joanna's question is who would be liable? Is that your question, um, Joanna? If there was an accident on a site following the installation? No, so we are working with engineers who are securing um, and ensuring that this project is safe for public use. So no, that would not be um, on the part of the artist, no. Can the ice be dyed? That's a great question. I believe it can. I believe that there are actually paints that exist for um, ice skating rinks that are often used in sports. Uh, so I don't know if it's dyeing, but there is a type of paint you can use. Such great questions, everybody. I'm I'm grateful to you. Are there any Are there any others? I'm I'm mindful of time. We've got about half an hour left. I can keep going if you can. <laughs> yes, metal is a material that is allowed to be used. Absolutely. So, um, Shelly uh, Zhang's beacons, those uh, sculptures that you saw earlier, are like a high grade or a heavy duty grade um, aluminum, powder coated. Rust is, is a consideration though. So powder coating was important, obviously. Yeah. Okay, I'm sensing things are winding down a little bit. Um, just wanna do a gentle check-in. Are there any sort of stray questions, stray thoughts? Um, I'm happy to hang around, but uh, yes, the $3,000 honorarium. Uh, so Gaia is asking, is the $3,000 honorarium separate from the budget? Is there a separate honorarium, honorarium for the accepted artist or is it the 15% you mentioned? So um, for the four finalists who develop a concept for us, they will receive a $3,000 honorarium that is separate from the budget, yes. And then yes, the artist fee for the selected artist would be 15% of that overall $140,000 budget. Uh, is there flexibility with changing the seating or storage that can be placed around the rink? I know the Bentway already has furniture like benches and chairs, but is there room to create something for that too? Um, so there are a few more uh, static things that occur around our skate trail. We do have the shipping containers, um, which actually this year are in a unique situation because we're doing some construction. But we typically have two shipping containers um, that are sort of warming centers um, or areas you can hang out in. Um, we also have a small... Um, uh, a refreshment or a beverage uh, container. And then we also have, of course, our uh, skate rental container. So those are some sort of static things that you can expect on site. And of course, anyone developing a proposal uh, for us, if they need further clarification on where those things are, we can provide that. Um, and then uh, the idea that the person had or the question the person had about furniture, there is existing furniture, but we would be open to a furniture commission. That's kind of an interesting way of taking this. Once again, um, you know, we would want to make sure that uh, it is not only durable, um, but can also, you know, act as an artwork as well. Um, uh, Gaia, it is 15% of the 140,000. The, the budget is 140,000. In terms of lighting, have people used solar lighting to conserve energy or is there not a capability based on if there's enough light? That's a great question, Joanna. Um, there is a lot of shade at the Bentway. There is very little direct sunlight. Um, definitely at a certain time of day, there's a certain angle of light. So you do get some direct sun, but in general, um, I, I have to say we would have to consult about uh, that. I am not a specialist in solar. Um, I'm trying to think if we have any solar powered precedents. Um, I think it would really depend. So we'd have to talk to someone about that. It's a great question. I wish I had an answer.
so is it possible to propose placement of more light for our installation? Not, uh, can, can you clarify that question? I'm, I'm not exactly sure what you mean there. Did you take, do you take locale into consideration for the proposals, especially if the team lives, works, grew up near the site? Um, so this is a national call for submissions. So we are um, not privileging anyone local to Toronto in this situation. Of course, across the Bentways commissions in our work, we do very much weight the city of Toronto and its residents, but we're always looking for a balance and exchange between local, national and international artists. For this particular opportunity, it is national in scope. So we wouldn't be privileging someone local. Yes, so um, if you have any further questions about the application, uh, you can reach out to Jamie Meyer. Um, actually, my colleague Dawn can probably drop her email in the chat, uh, but also it is here on the slide. If you have any particular questions, you can definitely reach out to Jamie. And if there are any for me, you could, she'll definitely forward that on to me. Yeah. Uh, Chris says, I'm curious what degree the proposal might change after the proposal stage, and does the jury take that into account? Um, of course, inevitably, uh, the proposal will will shift once, you know, fabricators, engineers, all the kind of reality checks are in place. So, um, of course, we understand that, you know, um, it is still in its early stages as a proposal, and the jury does, of course, acknowledge that. The onboarding period for those four shortlisted um, artists who are developing their proposals does expect you to sort of you know, feedback and learn enough about our processes so that you can provide an educated proposal, you know, that takes into consideration a lot of elements. But of course, we still understand that, you know, you're given a month to develop that rather than the multiple um, months that this thing will be developed over. Can the examples of previous works include private artworks, installations, commissions, if they include relevant fabrication and design experience? Yes, I think so. Yeah. Okay, I've answered 80 questions. Can we get to 85? But no pressure. If you don't have a question, it's okay. Um, is it a minimum of three or there, can there be more examples of work? We asked for three examples. Um, it's important, you know, to uh, be mindful of the people reviewing as well. What other materials are appropriate? Is the sky the limit, so to say? I think so. I mean, I think we are always excited for artists to teach us about new materials. Um, definitely who have experience working with different materials in the public realm. So I, I would say we're very open. I think it's just always a process of, you know, troubleshooting for health, safety and accessibility and also just what will serve the intention of the work the most. Clarification on the light question. For example, an installation that would require wiring for new lighting that isn't there already. I'm wondering if the wiring component is a deterrent. Um, so, I mean, we did uh, with Shelley's project that I've mentioned before, Beacons, we did uh, wire and cable uh, lights uh, for that installation. So that's not a barrier or a problem and wouldn't detract from your work. I think, you know, um, it's just to the degree that you would be creating a new electrical infrastructure perhaps, but uh, yeah, no, absolutely. We, uh, we, we can definitely um, take that on. Someone said even plants. Well, I, in Toronto winter, it's not the most hospitable time for plants. And that person should know that, shouldn't they? <laughs> Can works be kinetic? Um, I'd love that person to define what kinetic means to them. And then I'm happy to respond. What were some unsuccessful parts of previous installations, not well received by the Bentway or the public or lessons learned? Hmm. That's a great question. 
I mean, I think that I will hearken back to the conveyor belt piece that I referenced, the 650 foot conveyor belt that we suspended above the gardener, uh, sorry, above the skate trail uh, from the gardener. Um, that project was successful, but it was huge learnings for us in terms of what it means to maintain a piece that is hanging um, and also a piece that is kinetic. So yes, to go back to anonymous attendees question, kinetic meaning moving parts. So this was a conveyor belt that conveyed a series of objects. Because of the wind, and as I said before, these are not easy winds, these are really fast and quite forceful winds. Um, it's a huge learning experience for us just to get an engineer to sign off on something like this for a health and safety um, experience of our visitors. So I would say that that's a project's a great example of something being very ambitious. Um, and, you know, ultimately we pulled it off, but I think it has been a learning experience for our programming team and also a bit of a wake up call that maybe in the future we won't be doing things of that kind. Um, we've also over the years learned, you know, about sound thresholds in the area and how we need to be respectful of the condominiums that reside near us. Um, I think other things to think about are, you know, glaring lights. Uh, we, of course, love light on site, but glaring lights that might uh, interfere with traffic on Fort York Boulevard, which is the street um, adjacent to our site. Um, definitely, we've learned about things of that kind. So just being mindful of the context and the surrounding area, for sure. Uh, so someone asks if the artist is capable of doing some, some of the parts of the fabrication, or if there's a digital component to the proposal and the artist is able to do some of the technical programming of that portion, would the artist get additional compensation above the artist's fee for their additional fabrication or production involvement? It's a great question. I think we would need to understand the scope, to be honest, to give you a fairer question. I mean, if the entire project, so to speak, was the programming of it, I think we would want to reflect that in the artist's scope of work. But in general, we try to stick to the 15%. Uh, and I would say that in realizing a work of this kind, it is very important to delegate some of these pieces because the artist is involved in a big process already. So we, of course, you know, if it's part of an artist's practice, we welcome it. But I think we always try to tailor the scope to capacity and ensure that the artist can realize the project um, on the timeline. Uh, can, can community engagement happen digitally, or is the focus on what can happen on the site IRL? It's a great question. I think that we welcome digital participation in Bentway projects. For example, right now, you can submit your first winter story digitally um, uh, to us on our website, and that first winter story then is translated into public space and gets posted um, on signage around the site. I think, though, as a public space, our mandate really is about gathering IRL. And so um, there are a lot of other organizations that do digital um, activation and participation very well. I think the Bentway's real focus is on our space uh, in person. So I think that uh, while digital is welcome, we sort of would want to see the connection between that and the public realm. Okay, it's 642. I've answered 90 questions. Can we get to 100? No pressure. If there aren't any other questions, though, we can, of course, end a little bit early, but just want to make sure I'm hanging around if anyone has any lingering questions. Okay. Well, um, on the behalf of the Bentway, I just want to thank everyone for coming tonight and for the excellent questions. So thoughtful and so uh, site responsive. Really appreciated being in dialogue with you. Um, and uh, I think I would just underscore once again, Jamie's email here. If you want to get in touch, if you want to ask a nuts and bolts question about the application process, or if you want to reach out to me, uh, Jamie can definitely pass on any questions that you might have. Um, and uh, to look at the call for submissions, if there are any additional questions, because we definitely have things like timeline for production, things of that kind uh, there uh, in terms of the development process. 
Um, and how many applications do you expect to get? Well, this is our first transform the call, transform the trail open call. But for every call we put out, I would say for every program and initiative, we get between 40 and 60. So I'm thinking that hopefully it'll come in around there. Maybe we can exceed it. I'm hoping to see applications from across Canada. So really hope that uh, the folks here tonight uh, are representative of, you know, our, our vast country. And uh, yeah, hope to see, uh, hope to see all your applications come in soon. Thank you everyone for attending tonight. It's been a real pleasure uh, spending it with you.